The evidence in this case um, is a Ziploc bag. The background is that the witness described finding um, in their arm a small metal metallic object. We don't really actually know if it was metal. Um, embedded very slightly into their arm upon waking up in the morning, um, took the object, which was about a centimeter long, placed it in a Ziploc bag, and kept it with them the entire day. At the end of the day, the witness carefully placed the Ziploc bag under some of their belongings and then went to bed. In the morning, the object that was in the bag was missing and there was a hole in the bag. Uh, there were no smells detected, no unusual discoloration, no evidence at all of what happened to the object. Um, there are sketches uh, in a report of what the object looked like that will be made available. The um, it was roughly an omega shape or a crescent shape object. The um, we have the bag, and that's all we have. And and uh, we do have there is very clearly a hole there at the corner of the bag, and we're going to show you that bag now, and then look at it under a microscope, and then talk about some efforts to duplicate the damage that caused the hole in the bag. This is a quick tour of the evidence. Um, notice I'm handling it with gloves. I don't want to contaminate it with my finger oils or anything like that, my, the hairs on my hand. Um, this is a Ziploc bag which contains a Ziploc bag. The Ziploc bag itself is unremarkable except that there's a small tear in it. This is Antonio's note for the Ziploc bag. And the tear is in the lower corner. You can see it there. I'm going to put it under the microscope and do a quick video tour of it. And uh, I'll also flip it over. You can see it. It is actually a hole. It's not just a, a tear. There's a or a wrinkle there is a hole there it's a, about a centimeter uh, we have photographs of it that are, you can see its size it's roughly crescent shaped okay so onto the onto the see um, the actual opening itself. I'm going to try to get it better focused. That's what it looks like. You notice that the right at the opening, the uh, the plastic is very finely puckered. And I will move it around a little bit so you can see 
there's no apparent damage anywhere just outside that gap. And then right there is where the damage is. Right there. And I'm going to zoom in quite a lot. It'll be out of focus for a second. You can see it close up now. I'm trying to get a better focus for you. That's what the damage looks like close up. I don't really have any way to enhance it in video very easily, but that's what it is. You can see there's little bits of debris. We don't know exactly what the source is, and a small bit of discoloration, which shows up much better under enhancement. And we'll try to get this zoomed in here really well. And little trace bits of discoloration right at the opening, which might be, we speculate, from the witness, Bell. This is case 2012-0058. We're attempting some experiment to see if we can reproduce the evidence in the case. This is an ordinary polyethylene bag, store-bought. has a small amount of contamination in it, but that's not relevant. What I'm going to try to do is tear one corner simply by taking and seizing it my thumb and forefinger and pulling away by holding the rest of the bag between my thumb and forefinger like so and we'll see what kind of damage we get. Okay, you can see the removed piece there and the damage, which is quite irregular. Um, I suppose I could tear a bit more of it off. By the way, in the case, no other pieces were reported found you do see some puckering of the bag around where the tear is. Um, it's hard to get a good hole that way, but I suppose I now have a hole I can, where I could, an object could escape. The, the bag does appear to be somewhat puckered there. We'll examine under the microscope and 
see how it looks. The next video will be from the microscope. As you can see, these micrographs show that the damage, though not completely dissimilar from the evidence, is quite obviously different. You can definitely tell that it's not the same thing. Now I'm just going to take the other corner of this polyethylene bag and I'm going to just simply cut it with a pair of scissors and about the same shape and size as this amp. You can see very clearly there that there's no puckering at all, no distortion, uh, nice clean edge absolutely no evidence of tearing or burning or melting. It's very, very clearly different, which should be no surprise to anyone. The edge under 20 mag, by 20x magnification, very clean. Don't even need to take a micrograph for that. Now I'm going to take a very similar polyethylene bag, almost identical, and I'm going to push out from the inside just with my finger um, in an effort to make a very similar type of hole right at the corner. I'm going to just push out. Maybe my finger is too big, but you can see that's making a lot of damage. Uh, oh, well, that, that just made a huge gash. Um, I think you'd need a very small, very pointy finger to make a small hole. I'll try with the tip of the scissors on the other corner. There I think I should be able to make a more modest hole. Okay, there. See, that was a nice clean hole. And I don't see a whole lot of puckering around the hole. But the hole is right at the corner. It wasn't or a crescent shape at all. Um, well, right around, right around the corner, you do see obvious tearing and some bits that are poking out. I'll take some micrographs of that. I just took some micrographs of the initial tear by pushing out with the scissors. Decided it was too small, so I'm going to push out a bit more. Try to make it a little bit more messy. That's bigger. Now, um, under the hand lens, this does not look that dissimilar. From the evidence. We see little threads poking out. Well these are not as little as some of the ones in the, in the sample, but they're also much much newer. Welcome to the dimly lit workbench where we're going to try to duplicate the damage that was done using a uh, heat source, in this case a soldering iron, as you can see on the right there. Now the soldering iron is not warmed up yet. I'm going to warm it up and then get close to the corner of the polyethylene bag. By the way, this is a different polyethylene bag. This is a, uh, it's not even the same size, so it can't possibly be confused with the evidence in the case. So I'm zooming in on the corner there. That's where we'll be doing our work. Now I've, I've had to turn the light off the because I only have one electrical out in this in this area uh, to turn plug in the soldering iron. You see the light coming from the soldering iron. The uh, polyethylene bag is here. Soldering iron's here and I'm just going to close hold, hold it very close to the corner but not on it. And see what kind of damage we get. Now the melting point of rosin core solder is 188 degrees C I believe so um, if it can melt the solder it's definitely hot enough to melt polyethylene. 
And yes, it melts the solder easily. So it's probably closer to 200 degrees C or even higher. So now I'm going to place the corner, I've placed the uh, soldering iron very close to the corner, but not right on it. getting basically no damage without touching the bag. I'm going to move the magnifier over so I can see better. No, that's not going to work right now. Um, Okay, try again, very close but not touching. I can only get it to about a millimeter reliably without touching. So that's not working very well. I want to try to move the soldering iron. I actually only touched a little bit there, just over the top. Hold it, getting it close, but without touching it very much, if at all. Still no major damage. So I think I'm going to actually have to touch it to damage it. And we'll I'll try to make a about a one centimeter arc here. That's damaging it. Okay. So now I've got plastic smoke coming off my soldering iron. Not, not the best smell. And we'll go have a look at that. The experiment with reproducing the damage with the soldering iron uh, didn't go as well as I'd expected. Uh, I couldn't hold the soldering iron close enough to inflict any kind of major damage without touching it. So I had to touch it with the soldering iron. The result was quite an acrid smell, although I'm not sure you'd detect that smell if you were asleep. Uh, it dissipates quickly. Um, this is the bag that was damaged by the soldering iron. It's about the same size tear. It's not really a hole. I mean, it could be made into a hole, but uh, it's... It's still got some integrity. It would maybe even hold water. So um, that experiment, I think, in reproducing damage has largely failed. However, we will look at it under the, under the microscope and, and see what we can, if it looks any, at all similar to the actual evidence. This is a photomicrograph of the damage caused by the exterior soldering iron. For the next experiment, what I'm going to try to do is drop a piece of hot solder right onto the interior of the polyethylene bag and attempt to get it to go right through the bottom of the bag and melt its way out. So um, I'm just going to use some regular rosin core solder and try to get it to drop right where I want. And I'm going to make a few adjustments, but um, we'll have that 
going. Okay, uh, the soldering iron's heated up now, or should be very nearly heated up. There's the solder. I'm going to take a piece of it about, about a centimeter long. And I'm going to try to melt the entire bit right down into this area here. I hope that it will just make a nice clean hole. It's melting. It's not coming off the soldering iron fast enough. I'm going to have to use a longer piece. Get enough solder to drip off the iron. There, now we're getting some on the bottom of the bag. It does appear to be melted through the bag very nicely. Going down. That's run number one complete. The, um, <clears throat> the result wasn't exactly what I was going for. The hole was created by the solder, but the solder didn't completely exit out the bottom, and as a result, um, we don't quite have the same type of damage. Um, you can see the solder is still there in the, uh, in the bag. I'm going to, um, however, put this under the micrograph. Right where the hole is created is really the more interesting part. The solder itself is... Uh, Dropping the solder onto the polyethylene bag from the inside and trying to get it to exit and create a hole. It did create a hole. Um, and you can see here that there is a seam very locally heated where there's a lot of very small wrinkles and and puckers and the um the hole itself is a little bit of debris from the from the solder um there is a tiny fiber there. I don't know where that came from, but it, it's probably not relevant. Um, what I'm really looking for is the appearance right where the hole is of the bag itself. And you can see that looks quite similar to the evidence. I'll snap some photomicrographs of this and we'll be able to um, compare side by side. Now these are not the highest magnification I can get. I'm going to zoom in a bit more um, when I get the best look at the damage here. That's probably the best I'm going to get. Um, so I'm going to zoom in very tightly on that. And that's what it looks like with hot solder. You just drop through it. At this very small scale, you can see the, how it, it's kind of melted and what it looks like. So I'm going to have to be a little bit ambivalent about what we can conclude so far. Um, I would say that I'm strongly leaning towards the conclusion that the damage to the evidence was caused by something hot on the inside that heated up quickly and um, caused the hole in the bag. 
I not able to determine what happened to the object that was had been placed in the bag earlier. There doesn't seem to be very much evidence of that. There is some evidence on some of the photomicrographs of some de debris or residue that could be um, could be anything. Uh, some of them appear to have a reddish color. There is some speculation that some of the witnesses' blood could be there, uh, but it's right now it's speculation. We haven't got any evidence of blood. Um, it's since the evidence is more than a year old and we could have possibly been exposed to high heat. I wouldn't expect to find any blood cells per se. Uh, there could be a little hemoglobin left over. Um, we might be able to find that out with the test. The, however, the amounts are are very very small. That we're talking about the uh, the why questions here that one wants to ask. Um, I can't answer those questions. I'm not even sure I can ask them all properly. Uh, why this object would be removed? How it, uh, you know, why the particular method of removal? As opposed to just simply taking the bag while the witness slept. Um, none of that we can hope to answer at this point. Um, those are bigger questions. What we can, I think, reasonably conclude is that um, that the damage to the bag uh, was caused by something other than someone simply cutting the bag open or tearing the bag open. Uh, if you simply wanted to remove the object from the bag, you would open the bag at the opening and reach in and grab the object. So um, we have a very interesting case here. I think there's some hope we can further corroborate the witness's testimony. And that's about as far as we can go. I think beyond that, we need more information that right now we don't have.